It literally contains all the features of good Scandinavian furniture. I really like this little chair called Clam. And Clam is here you can simply walk through these rooms and enjoy the selection of wall colors because they are very unusual, complex colors, very... And it's an entire townhouse that was specially decorated by the designer for the festival. And now we have moved, probably to the most distant location from the center of the festival three days of design, which is called Refs Halioin, if I am pronouncing it correctly in Danish. If you speak Danish, you can give a double like. So, here in the former industrial area, a creative cluster has been organized. There has been a certain transformation, and there are a couple of interesting locations here. In particular, I am currently in some kind of garden park where IKEA is hosting pop-up events, and when we talk about Scandinavian design, it is impossible not to mention it. Here, right in this little garden, right in this mini park, various items from the collection of this famous Swedish manufacturer are installed, and all of it is in white. It all looks very much like an installation. In addition to the park, there is also this large glamping tent, all in white. You can lounge around there, and, in principle, you can also lounge outside, or sit down. Here, they even treat you to their signature IKEA meatballs. Overall, the atmosphere is lovely, and of course, it seems to generate some incredible additional loyalty to this brand. But if there is such a white dystopia here, then in the neighboring pavilion, there is a white utopia. In other words, the team attempted to create an interior house entirely from biomaterials. That is to say, walls made of biomaterials, a ceiling made of biomaterials, various items made of biomaterials, including lights, sofas made of biofoam, and a bed made from the same material, as well as some chairs and a table. It really is such a concept. Can we live like this? But why white? That's because biomaterials typically have a white or some sort of beige transparent shade, and only then do they add some colored pigment to them. So, friends, let us know if you would like to live in such a buy a white house, or do you prefer IKEA instead? Also white, but more realistic and more accessible. Although, how should we look at it now? While we move on to the next point, it is worth mentioning once again the famous project of the Waste to Energy Ski Resort. This is exactly the slope with the pipe that was designed by Bjarking Els. So, yes, I haven't been this close to it before, and indeed, it's a really cool project, conceptually and from an architectural standpoint as well. Here we have the most hip exhibition, because the ambience is just like that. Because there are some yurts, a little garden, absolutely some happy people. People like flowers, and in one of the yurts, some items are presented. For me, there is always this dilemma about what separates modern design from just junk. I'll say it carefully, there are some items made from mycelium, and even some flip-flops made from recycled pits from various things, olives, nuts, and so on, some small bowls, dishes, well, it all seems quite, I don't know, maybe it's because it's presented in such a voluminous way, it's quite grim, in my opinion, and here, everything is quite hip, I suppose it works for a yurt, but for real life, I don't think it's very suitable. If you have any opinion on this matter, it would be very interesting to know. Write about where the line is drawn between such worthless crafts and genuine design. That applies the principles of sustainable development. And this has an ambience reminiscent of a cable port. In general, an industrial space, some kind of workshop, has been transformed into an exhibition. I must say, it looks quite good. And it seemed to me that this is precisely the boundary between nonsense made from biodegradable materials and some decent story made. Again, from these photogenic materials or natural materials. It was somewhere here in this pavilion because there were items made from recycled cardboard and items made from wood fungus and they generally look quite interesting. Similarly, some composite materials and the children's furniture were also quite nice. It means that we can create decent things. We just need to add some design because one idea is that we are children of flowers and make everything from what is at hand. Some raw materials are lacking. It is still necessary to add design. By the way, regular manufacturers are also present here. Moreover, even those who were present, for example, from Fellow Palette. And that is interesting too. It seems that the company selects locations based on the target audience, as it clearly differs, and slightly different characters are drawn here compared to the more refined space. 
By the way, these little houses are an excellent location for showcasing student work. In these two small cottages, the work of the furniture design department of Alta University is showcased. That is, accordingly, of Helsinki University. And in this context, it looks fine. And, by the way, I think that all these fakes about the young are just right for such small houses. They are quite a decent solution for a summer house. But as for the University of Alta and the designers they are training, we discussed this in quite detail while attending Helsinki Design Week. That was quite some time ago. Nevertheless, if you're interested, take a look because the building is interesting and beautiful, as well as the interiors. Well, it seems that this also somehow affects the creative potential of young talents. Of course, another icon of lighting design in Denmark could not be missed. This is the showroom of the company Astep, whose range is largely associated with designer Jean Sofarty. And so, for this show, they prepared another new release of the Model 262. And they did this not just by saying, look at this little light fixture designed by Jean Sofarty. Of course, it is a modern light fixture. In addition to that, this is a light fixture presented in such a lighting installation by a contemporary designer that, overall, it looks quite impressive and convincing. The lamp itself is very interesting in its architecture, one might even say. Another new product is the Surpresa lighting fixtures. This frame, covered with fabric, also looks maximally Scandinavian. The designer is Samuel Wilkinson. As for the rest, of course, it's all classic. And again, classic from Jean Sofarty. The floor lamps are very slender and elegant. Model 1095, Model 2065 is such a delight. And, of course, there is an enormous number of model variations that are impossible to remember. These include various types that can be mounted in different ways, whether as ceiling fixtures, chandeliers, wall sconces, or in any form you desire. By the way, there can also be white and transparent spheres, which adds to the variety. This is the so-called tribute collection from the modern range, specifically from the evolution collection, where attention should be paid to the small portable lamps. This is Knox a slightly inflated balloon with a handle and a cute wooden pepper O. I almost forgot, from the classics. Additionally, Vitrina Vigna is also present here, with the famous Chanquanta available in both pendant and wall-mounted versions, along with an incredible variety of styles and combinations. So do take note, as it adds a very cool touch to any exquisite interior. But when we talk about public spaces, there, in addition to the details, practical aspect is also needed, namely, besides light, acoustics. There are also such lighting fixtures. They were designed by Danish designer David Trupp. They are called IZL. And there is some remarkably interesting technology called snow sound. The sound of snow, I don't know, maybe it creaks or something. These lighting fixtures absorb excess sound and, accordingly, create acoustic comfort in workspaces or other public areas. Maybe it would also fit in the children's room, by the way. Well, we need to make an effort to integrate it, and it will work. Let's add some classics of Danish design with character, so to speak. And of course, this includes the classics of Danish design. These are models from the 1960s and 1970s. The sofa is really cool. The armchair which is called director, naturally goes with the director's desk. I like the console. It has something quite Eastern about it, I suppose. It should be noted that here you will find not only the classics of Danish design, but also collaborations with the classics of Italian design. There are chairs and lounge chairs by Afro and Tobio Scarpo, and at the entrance, a table designed by the unforgettable Angelo Mangiarotti. We talked a lot about him when we were visiting Agopo. In particular, it turns out that the main collection is currently being produced under the Agopo Cosa flag, including for this Danish company, where Angela has also worked. As we move along Bradgate Street, here are a couple of practical tips. If you attend the three days of design in Copenhagen next year, firstly, Take note that they have an app where all participants and exhibitions are listed, organized by districts, which is quite convenient. If you prepare, you will save a lot of time and have a great deal of fun. I would probably recommend starting on this street, as it has the highest concentration of everything. Firstly, this is where the Orfalo Pali is located. Finger right behind the marble church is this building of Friedrichsgabe. Here is the design museum. We were there last year. 
If you're interested, do take a look as well. And here, galleries come one after another. In other words, you can simply move from door to door, entering any of them and enjoying yourself. There are constantly new locations, opening up for me, at least, because there's this mansion with open doors, music playing, inviting you in, and there's a kind of magic both in terms of the interiors and the objects. All of this together, the items and the context, certainly creates a complete sense of immersion in Danish design. Moreover, it is not just Danish, but in a broader sense, Nordic design. Sometimes, of course, you come across very amusing locations and very amusing exhibitions. The locations are amusing in their own right. You go up to the fifth floor, reach the attic, and everything there is very interesting. For starters, just taking a stroll through this grand entrance, through this hallway, it is a pleasure to look at the combination of colors, the architectural decorative patterns, and the handles on the doors. All of this is very interesting in itself. Interestingly, the collection presented there didn't really impress me. However, it might be worth paying attention to the fur table. It should be noted that right now all these furs and sheepskins, both in natural and artificial forms, but also in demand and on trend. This is an expansion of the theme of texture and tactile quality. But, in principle, all these skins originated from Scandinavia, and now they are already present in the collections of practically all manufacturers around the world. You can look at the rooftops, admire the stained glass, and take a ride in the old lift. This also deserves attention and is a separate pleasure, despite the fact that, well, as I said, the items did not impress me much. Since we are on the topic of classics, we cannot overlook such a classic of Danish design as Werner Panton. And of course, I popped into his showroom, more precisely, into the club. Everything in this club is as vibrant as possible. Bright colors, bold solutions, the classics of design. The classics refer not only to furniture, but also to lighting. In fact, I don't even know which is more recognizable, the furniture or the lighting, because it seems to me that it might even be the lighting with all those globes and spirals. All these cheerful little pendants in various variations are quite commonly found. And, by the way, it should be noted that this is not exactly atomic, so I do not recommend buying fakes. Traditionally, because Panton, of course, imitates everything that anyone can be bothered to, and, naturally, furniture as well, in accordance with all the modern trends. Furniture is now also made in an outdoor version. Werner Panton himself did not originally foresee this. We waved the flag and visited. I am satisfied. I hope you are too. So far, my coolest discoveries have been some random, unplanned ones. I was walking along and found another entrance. It looks like the renovation is still ongoing there. To be precise, it hasn't been finished yet. And here, in this space, firstly, the entrance is absolutely stunning with this marble-like painting. This technique was quite popular in Denmark at one time, painting walls to resemble marble. There, on the second floor, is an exhibition, contemporary and historical Scandinavian design. It's quite interesting, but overall it's somewhat expected. Nevertheless, everything looks really great. The interior still plays one of the most important roles here. Without it, nothing would look as great. On the other hand, in a completely fantastic, luxurious hall, there are works by a Belgian artist. This is no longer furniture. These are objects of contemporary art. There is a lot of stone, and it's quite rough stone. And again, everything is very conceptual, and the artist himself is there. And he, of course, showed me these sculptures of his. They really impressed me in a very special way. I don't know, it seems that everything together, once again, worked out. So, friends, what I want to say is that such events are not just about new products and that is, not just inspiration, but also experience. It's not only about copying or counting some ideas, but also about truly experiencing something.
I love such conceptual projects where the showroom transforms and everything follows a particular narrative. Three floors of curated Danish design are divided into various elements from which one can assemble that very design. Primarily interior design. It all begins with scenography. Scenography in the broadest sense of the word. This includes, in fact, the artistic arrangement as well as some podiums and curtains that can also divide, zone and create a certain mood in the space. The element of metallics. We've already talked a bit about metallics. I'm not really convinced by this idea, but in principle, it could be an impressive solution for some public spaces, like a lobby or a nice office reception. It's a very interesting story. We've encountered it before. This is an element of color, but it's not color in the literal sense. Like this little green sofa or that terracotta sofa. It's specifically the color of light. All the furniture there is white, and it shows how the interior changes depending on the tone of the light altering the mood. I'm not very sure that light music is really a necessary scenography within the context of a living interior. But if we talk about the color temperature of light from warm to cool, then, of course, the interior changes significantly. This is something to keep in mind and pay attention to. But again, what kind of public space could it be? It very well might be. By the way, a very similar idea was showcased in the very first mansion, this one, in Friedrichsgate. There was a digital mood board created by Sony who could also play around with the tone of the interior. It seems to me that the ideas here somewhat intersect. So, another element of a good interior is its social function, meaning it is a place for gatherings, an element referred to as togetherness, which signifies being together. I don't know. I can't come up with a word that could be derived from the word together. I mean, we are simply together. We have gathered around the table and we are having a wonderful time. The social role of any interior is quite significant, probably the most important. Next, we ascend to the top floor. There we have an element of nature. Again, a conversation with visitors about how we can use natural materials to create new interior items. In particular, what is shown is no longer a prototype, but generally speaking, a serial sample of chairs, the seat of which is made from what? From hemp. So, friends, you can not only have fun with hemp, but also make quite useful and, most importantly, very environmentally conscious things. Next, we have a wooden element. As for wood, everything is clear here too. It is in the DNA of Scandinavian culture to use wood for furniture production in the interior. Wood is everywhere, on the floor, absolutely everywhere. And of course, Scandinavian furniture without wood is unthinkable. This is an utterly impossible story. I can hardly imagine it. But again, it is the most eco-friendly material. We talked about how wood is the most reliable parking for carbon dioxide. And lastly, there is the element of innovation, which means the element of transforming what has already been created into something new and, perhaps, more beautiful. This is what is known as circular design. We have all heard of the circular economy. Accordingly, design plays a very important role in the realization of this concept. Well, friends, three days of design in Copenhagen flew by like one. For you, it was overall, I think, significantly quicker. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed the locations we visited together. By the way, I also managed to visit another place. It's called Social House. There, mainly Swedish manufacturers are represented, and I must say, they are quite good. And interestingly, in Swedish, the word stola also sounds like stola. This is important information there. there. Was one very interesting little armchair that I liked. So, this is an armchair with ears, but these ears can be detached, allowing it to be turned into a regular armchair. Quite a good idea. In fact, there turned out to be a lot of ideas here. So make sure to give it a like. It's important. I'm not asking for any donations, but as you can understand, traveling is not the cheapest pleasure at the moment. Please write something nice. If you really want to fully support our channel, then please share this video with your friends. Of course, it will be useful for them too. Don't forget to subscribe to the Telegram channel. There, on a daily basis, we publish various interesting projects, as well as our notes on the subject. Well, of course, there are announcements, videos, naturally, as well as interesting, events, among other things. Well, see you at the next trip. 
for the next design event. That's all. Goodbye.